Okay, I can't do it while you're there. You know what? Wait, this is a bit too low down. Hello, welcome to my channel. Yeah. Would you watch me if you didn't know me? Or would you be like, she's just... Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, so welcome back to my channel. This is part three of how to use Sales Navigator for lead generation. Today I'm gonna to be covering how to use LinkedIn tags. I know it's a super sexy topic and I hope you guys find this whole episode extremely interesting. We're gonna jump onto my laptop, enjoy, take notes, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. Okay, so we are gonna cover LinkedIn tags. So let's go into Sales Nav once again. Now, obviously, as, as the other videos, I'm going to use the same lead list, same saved search that we've used previously. So if you haven't watched the other two videos, go and watch them now because I have done it in a sequential order on purpose so that it all makes sense. Also, if you haven't before watching this video, go and watch the free training where I cover the ECCC method. If you haven't watched that, pause this video, go watch it and it's something that you can implement from stage two, so from when we've built the lead lists. Now, a lot of people get confused with the difference between lead lists and tagging and how you should really use it. So this is how, I literally Googled it. When I first tried to figure this out, I tried to Google it to understand there's not really any content that explains the difference and why you would use a tag or save a lead to a list. So this is what I've devised. This is how I kind of have created it into my own little CRM to really organize my leads because I know it can get a little bit confusing and overwhelming when you've got so many different prospects, especially on LinkedIn, you've got new people being added into these searches day in, day out. So once we've got the saved search, we've got the lead list. Let's go over into the lead list over here. Say for example, you would literally do the same thing with the different lead lists in terms of the tagging system. So for restaurant owners, I'd go into that lead list that we created. What I could do is as I farm through this list, so say for example, with tags, I like to set it up where I have it from um, connection request sent, spoken with, so you've had a conversation with them, you've engaged with them, you've planned a meeting, you've done the meeting, you've had a sales call, and then you've closed them. So I like to have those different tags. What we can do is if, for example, with Piers, I'll show you his as an example, with him, I can add a tag to this lead. So I could add a tag, you can see how I've got the other ones here. I'm gonna make a new one. So I'm gonna do, well, actually this is quite, let's say number one, connection, request, sent, create new. He's gonna have this tag. As this person moves through the CRM process, I can add more tags and delete previous tags. So I'm gonna show you all the tags here. So we're gonna do one, connect request sent, two, engaged. So this person has accepted, they have responded to your message, you're having a conversation. Three, meeting, planned. Add tag, we could do four, meeting, done, create new. Five, um, closed, create new. So we've got five tags of which as he moves through this process, we can delete the other tags if need be so that when we go to search people that we've only sent a connection request to or we've planned a meeting, we need to follow up to make sure that meeting is set, that they've booked in a time, then this person isn't gonna show up. So say for example, we closed him, I would then remove him from all these other tags and he's not gonna show up. If I go back to the list, I'm gonna show you this. So for example, if I open up these three people, let's say I have sent connection requests to all of these people. I'm gonna apply, I'm gonna pretend we've not closed them. So connection request sent, add a tag, connection request sent, apply, add a tag, connection request sent, apply, apply. So these tags have all been added. If we go back onto Sales Navigator, all you need to do to then be able to see the different people that you've tagged in different ways is go on to lead lists, my saved leads, custom lists, select leads, restaurant owners, and then I'll show you here that they're added to a list if they've got a tag attached to them. You can also add tags from here as well. 
And then to filter by tags is you go on this and you say, okay, who have I sent a connection request to? And it will show you the full people that we tagged. So that is exactly how I use tagging as a CRM system. So for example, if these people all have the connection request sent, I know the next stage is to see have they accepted me? Have they seen my message? Have they ignored it? Have they engaged with me? Which then gives me that information to move forward and push them through that sales process. If for example, someone responds to me, I can add another tag. Literally from here I can tag, I can do um, meeting planned, apply, and I can remove this tag. Refresh this page. Let me see. Go on here, connect to request sent. I think we did a meeting planned. It's getting confusing which one I've done now. Meeting planned, then it'll show up with the person that I just tagged. So that's how I use tags as a sort of internal CRM system with LinkedIn. I hope this made sense. I literally redid these videos to lay it out for you properly um, because I know it can get a little bit confusing. So, hey guys, so that's everything for this video. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought. If you haven't, go and watch the two previous videos to this because they are in sequential order. If you have any video recommend recommendations or requests or comments on what you thought about this informative style video, then please let me know down below and I will see you in the next video.